Hello, I'm James and I'm here in my garden this morning, which is very appropriate because I'm here to talk about a new book called Mrs. Noah's Garden. And it's all about a new garden being created by the character of Mrs. Noah, written by Jackie Morris. And I'm here to ask Jackie Morris some questions. So my first question, Jackie, is what inspired you to create the character of Mrs Noah? I think I was out walking on the hill and it had been raining and raining in the way that it only does in Pembrokeshire, I think. Um, and what had happened was um, the path that I was walking up had changed from being a path into being a stream. And I just got this uh, sentence that came into my head, something about... Uh, Paths became streams and rivers, uh, roads became rivers. Um, started thinking about the rain and I'd had an idea buzzing away in my head to do something with the story of Noah's Ark, but I couldn't catch what it was. And I've always felt like Noah had such a big part to play in the story and very few people talked about his wife. So it seemed to me that uh, it was time that somebody actually looked at Mrs Noah and gave her a bit more of a role in the story. That's kind of what I was trying to do. Jackie, question number two. How much are you like the character of Mrs Noah? Are the stories at all autobiographical? How much am I like Mrs Noah? Um, not very much. Um, she seems, she's, she's kind of somebody that I would aspire to be like. She's quiet, um, she's a thinker, she spends her time assessing situations and rather than looking at the problems, she searches for the solutions and I wish I was more like her and uh, could listen more, talk less and be as kind as she is. And... Um, I don't know whether you can see in the background, but my owl would agree with me on all those points. Jackie, in the first story about Mrs Noah, uh, Mrs Noah's pockets, the character of Mrs Noah is very independent of Mr Noah. She goes against his plans very deliberately. But in the second story, it feels very healing, very forgiving as they come back together. Was that always your plan or did the stories grow in an unexpected way. I had no idea, I think, I think I had no idea when I wrote Mrs Noah's Pockets that there was going to be a sequel to the story. I'm hoping there will be more. Um, there's a phrase that is in my head that goes, Mrs Noah sings as she sows and she sows seeds and she sows clothes. And I thought that was the start of a story, but that's as far as I've got. Um, so I think maybe it comes somewhere in the middle of a story about stitching. Um, she does like to sew, Mrs Noah, she does. But no, it began as a standalone story and then um, she grew a garden uh, where the ark landed uh, with a bit of help from her friends. She has many friends. Um, um, yeah. I hope she goes on to have more adventures. One of the books I'd like to write is Mrs Noah's Big Book of Bedtime Stories because I don't know whether you can remember, but when they were on the ark, she, in the evenings, would read to the children and tell them stories. And um, I've, I've always thought that the book that she would have had, which have, would have been in her pockets as well, so it has to be a pocket-sized book, um, would be full of stories about minotaurs and unicorns and dragons and all the kinds of things that make Mr Noah just a little bit grumpy. Um, but maybe actually he loves them too. Question number four. Jackie, have you got a garden? Do you like gardening? What's your favourite flower? I live in a house, not in a boat. Um, I do sometimes feel like I've got two of every animal in my house. I, I have four cats and uh, three dogs that I live with. Uh, my children have grown up now and they've left home, but they keep coming back. 
Um, so they, maybe they like it here. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, around the house is what is known as a garden. But um, I, I'd rather spend my time painting, really, than gardening. And um, my garden is very wild, but as a result, it has all kinds of things in it. Like um, there are lizards and there are frogs and there are toads. And um, sometimes there are um, like those little hummingbird moths. Um, lots and lots of butterflies in the spring. Um, at the moment there's orange tips around and woodland browns. There's a hedge that runs down the side of my garden and every spring it just turns into this wash of uh, blackthorn blossom which is white and it looks like snow. Um, and I hang bird feeders there and then the birds just thread through the branches and um, Really, my garden is, is a very welcome place for birds and animals, but also people, because there is a public footpath that runs right through my garden, and people do walk on it. It's a little bit overgrown, but uh, I just it's lovely when you meet people just walking through your garden. Last question, Jackie. What do you hope people take from this story? What do you think is the message? When you write a story, I think you can never know quite what people are going to take from it. Um, I wrote it partly because I wanted to do something about the arc. I wanted to write about tolerance. Uh, I wanted to write about how there was room in the world for lots of different ideas. I wanted to write about how sometimes... Um, you don't have to argue with somebody in order to get them to see your point of view. Um, Mrs Noah has an idea which is different from Noah. She doesn't really go against him. Um, she just does what she wants to do. Um, what she thinks is right. And um, I kind of hope that people find in my books a place to talk about things. Um, and one of the things that I really love is learning about my books from readers, uh, learning how they see them. Um, one of the things that somebody said was that they were upset because Mrs Noah doesn't have a name. Um, she does have a name, she just doesn't choose to tell it to many people. Um, obviously Noah knows what her name is and a uh, few other people do. But uh, she keeps a lot of things to herself. I like her. James, um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was, Mrs Noah, the artwork is very different from what I've seen from you before. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you found your way into the language for this book? and why you felt that you wanted to do it in a different way. So how did I find the visual language and why is it so different? Well, when you first wrote the story, the first book, Mrs Noah's Pockets, uh, I was a bit worried because I thought it was such a beautiful text, but I didn't feel the illustrations I was doing at the time which were pen and ink and watercolour wash, I didn't think they suited the words. I didn't think I was the right illustrator, even though it was written for me. So I was worried. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to resolve that. And time was passing and I couldn't find a solution to this problem. And then I went through um, a bit of a personal crisis, actually. Um, um, I came out and it was a very difficult time and out of that crisis, out of that big change in life, I suddenly found that I was able to try new things and experiment with, with my work in a way that I just hadn't been able to do before. So in, this, in a way it kind of echoes Mrs Noah's experience. She goes through this huge change in life. Uh, her whole world that she knows it is destroyed by a flood in her case and she has to pack up and go. And, and I had to do the same. I had to leave a marriage and pack up and go and start all over again. And so that really resonated with me. And the way I illustrated it was actually by, by 
tearing things up, destroying things that I wasn't happy with, paintings that had gone wrong, and suddenly there on the table in front of me appeared uh, a landscape. Uh, uh, and I was able to use all these bits of paper to create um, images, to create um, skies and water and the things that I needed to tell the story. And in that I added some printmaking because I've always loved printmaking and this was the first time I'd really found a way to use it. So I was doing just abstract lino cuts and repeating the patterns in different colours over and over which I think gives a, a fluid, cohesive element to the illustrations. So it was a very new way of working, very experimental. Uh, it took a certain amount of courage, I have to say, but I loved it and I'm still using it now and it's really changed my practice. It's really changed the way I think about composition, shape and form and actually the emotion in, in an illustration, the emotional core of an illustration, how I think about that. Uh, it's revolutionised the way I work and I'm incredibly grateful to you for writing those words which kick-started the whole process. My second question is, do you like Mrs Noah? And do I like Mrs Noah? I think she's fabulous. I think I'd be a little bit intimidated by her in real life because she's so resourceful and accomplished. But I love that she has this, this calm authority. She just carries on and does what she knows, what she believes to be the right thing to do. And she has this gorgeous capacity to just heal things and make everything all right somehow. I think she's a fabulous character because you don't say very much about her but it's just there somehow hidden um, in the inference between the words. It's very clever and if you go back to the Bible, Mrs Noah, obviously she's the mother of the human race because everyone else has been drowned. So it was important to me to make her um, uh, look strong and powerful and, and, and magnificent in the illustrations actually, which is why she has such a spectacular um, coat. But also I wanted there to be a, a sort of sense of kindness and warmth in the character, because I feel that's there too. And so I felt that she needed to be almost like Mother Earth. She had to have that quality about her. So. Yes, I like Mrs Noah very, very much and I think it would be wonderful if everybody could have someone like her in their lives. She's a bit like Moomin Mama, somehow she just makes things all right. Question number th three is kind of like a question for both of us really. Um, I wonder, I know you write and illustrate. Um, I've illustrated some of your work. I love doing that. Um, which do you prefer? Do you prefer writing or do you prefer illustrating? If you had asked me this question 10 or 15 years ago, I would definitely have said illustration because I was very underconfident about my writing. But it was about that time that I started writing stories for you to illustrate. And that was a huge boost to my confidence as a writer because I realized that I could write, I could string sentences together and my books weren't being published just because I was illustrating them. Uh, they were being published with somebody else's illustrations, which meant the words had to stand on their own. Today I love both and they're very different processes. I think that if I'm writing and illustrating a book, that's an, an opportunity to really dovetail things together. But it's also a big responsibility because you have to juggle both things. And sometimes it's nice just to do one or the other. I can't honestly say that I prefer one above the other because they're very different and I like having that variety in my work. What I can say is that I think if I was only just illustrating all the time, then I think it would be very hard to, to continue to feel creative and inspired. I think by writing, that feeds back into the illustration. It gives me a break from the illustration, but it also feeds back into it. It makes me think about it in different ways. So I enjoy both, and I think they support each other very nicely. Do you have a garden um, of your own? And if you do, do you like spending time gardening? Uh, do I have a garden? Well, hello, here we are in my garden. Uh, I say my garden, really, actually I don't get to do very much gardening because 
I'm, I'm working all the time. I used to love gardening. My first house I ever had, I gardened a lot. And I do enjoy it, I do love it. This time of the year particularly when the soil is getting warm, you can get your hands into the warm soil and, and, um, and, and, and plant seeds and nurture them. It's a magical feeling and I, and I love what a garden can be. Uh, I have to say that this garden here is a little bit of paradise and it's really all the hard work of, of my partner Toto. He designed and, and created this garden and uh, it's a lovely little sanctuary to come and sit in when, um, when I need a, a, a bit of a break. But I don't get much time to do the gardening myself so um, I'm afraid that the garden for me is somewhere to relax rather than somewhere to work these days. My last question for you, James, is not so much about the book. It's um, a question about home. What is your understanding of the word home? What does that word mean to you? That is such a hard question. What is home? Um, I think it has meant different things at different times of my life. So when I was young, home was just where I lived with my family and my parents and my sister. But now I think, well, there are several layers to it. I, I think Suffolk, <clears throat> I, uh, I live in Suffolk, which is where I grew up. And that's very much home to me. Of all the parts of Britain I've visited, Suffolk is the place that feels like home. It's always been calling me back when I wasn't living here. And when I returned from a trip, and see the, the Waveney Valley and this lovely gentle liquid landscape with all the rivers and water meadows and the big skies. Uh, my heart skips, I have to say. It's, it's almost like the landscape brings its arms around and gives you a gentle hug. It is a very gentle landscape here. Um, full of birds and wildlife. Uh, last night we came and sat in the garden and listened to the nightingales. Couldn't see them, but we could hear them. Um, so that's very much part of home for me but uh, of course home can be anywhere really if if I can work because actually the first thing I did when, when we moved to this house was set up a studio to work in so for me home is is also somewhere where I can be creative and I know a lot of illustrators like to have their studio separate to the house I never have I've always liked my studio to be in the house so if, if I wake up at two o'clock in the morning because I'm worried about an illustration which happens very often <laughs> I can I can nip to the studio and tinker with it which is probably not very healthy but that's that's how I like it to be I think for me a, a studio a place to work a place to, to create art or to write stories for me that that's the the core of, of home for me and of course to have loved ones there as well and some some days I don't even see Toto because I'm working all the time but I just like to know he's there.